The shadow of your smile is the standard of the month here on my YouTube channel and Patreon page. In today's lesson, I will show you how to play the chords of this tune and break down the harmony. Now you can get the chord shapes and the chart that you see on the screen, uh, link in the description. Uh, let's get on to it. This song dates back to 1965. I believe it was written for a film called The Sandpiper, written by Johnny Mandel with lyrics added by Paul Webster. On to the basics of this tune. It is in A, B form, with each section lasting 16 bars, giving us 32 bars in total. Now, it's typically played in the key of E minor, G major, and look at the key signature, we've got one sharp. Now, I'll run through the chord shapes you're gonna need for this one, but just to say, there's quite a few chords in this one, but a lot of the chord shapes are used again, for instance, A7 shape being used for B7, C7, and so on. All of these chord shapes that I'm about to show you, you can get them in a PDF link in the description. I'll just play through each chord for you so you can see how I'm fretting it. Obviously, you may find different ways of fretting them are more comfortable for you in terms of what fingers you use. So, starting off with A7. Four note voicing. A minor seven. B7. B minor seven flat five and B minor seven C major seven off the A string C minor seven and C seven. So obviously we've used that shape a couple of times already for A seven and B seven. C sharp minor seven flat five. We've used that shape already for B minor seven flat five. Uh, D9, E minor 7, E minor slash D, that's probably the fiddiest of the chords I would say, E7 flat 9, E flat 9, F sharp minor 7, F sharp minor 7 flat 5, F sharp seven, G six, and G major seven. Here's the chords for the A section. So we start out on F sharp minor seven off the E string. Moving to B seven, to E minor seven. I'm picking the individual notes of the chords so you can, I think, hear the chord movement a bit more when you do that to A7, so we've got F sharp minor 7, B7, E minor 7, to A7, bar of each, then we turn this into a minor chord, A minor 7, to D9, some people like to play D7 here, or even D7 flat 9, um, leading us nicely to G major, over to C major. And that's our first eight bars. So and the next eight bars, bars nine to sixteen, go like this. F sharp minor seven flat five, leading to B seven to E minor seven. Now we're gonna play this for one and a half bars. So like one, two, three, four, one, two. And then on the last two beats of that bar on that line, we're gonna play an inversion of E minor seven, E minor seven with D in the bass, which is the seventh in the bass. Leading us, that bass note leading us down to a C sharp minor seven flat five, taking us to F sharp seven. And then People like to do quite a few different chords here. Some people like to do F sharp minor seven to B seven, bar of each. I like B seven to C seven and back. And in that bar, it's quite common, particularly when playing the melody, to do a stop. So you go like, uh, and then the melody would be played. So it'd be like, two, three, four, then back in for the B section. Now the B section starts exactly the same as the A section, so we've got a bar of F sharp minor 7 to B7, leading to E minor 7 to A7, 
second line of that section, A minor 7 again, just the same as the start, and to D9, and a nice harmonic twist here, going to B minor 7 flat 5, to an E7 flat 9, which leads us nicely into the last 8. The last 8 starts with A minor 7, and then up to C minor 7, half a bar to F9, so it's going 1, 2, and then I'm changing over for beats 3 and 4. Uh, then B minor 7 to E7 flat 9. And the last line goes A7, E flat 9, half bar of each to a bar of D9, then two bars of G6. Now here's once through the chords for you close up. One, two, three, four. Now rhythmically this song is typically played with a Latin kind of feel, often kind of bossa nova. There are some renditions that have more of a swing feel or switch between the two. I'm not going to cover that in today's video but if it's something you're not yet to explore then I've already made a video on that topic and I'll link that in the description below. Now onto the harmonic analysis and I feel this song does something which is quite common in many other jazz standards, things like classics like Autumn Leaves and that is it's maybe not in one key in the sense that it flips between a major and a minor feel. So going between the relative minor and relative major. So reminder, earlier on I said, you know, we've got one sharp, this song's often played in the key of E minor, G major. And really that's what's happening. There's sections in this song where it feels like we're in E minor and there's other bits where it feels like we're in G major. Obviously those two keys are, are so, so closely related. Uh, in order for you to understand this, let's just think about what chords you get in the key of E minor and the key of G major. So if we took the key of E minor, we'd get the following seven chords. E minor seven is chord one. Chord two would be F sharp minor seven flat five. Chord three would be G major seven. Chord four would be A minor seven. Chord five would be B minor seven, but in practice it's more likely to be a B dominant seventh. And then chord six would be C major seven. And then finally chord seven would be D seven. And if we were in G major, we'd have all the same chords, but just G would become chord one, and then it would go as follows. G chord one, A minor seven chord two, B minor seven chord three, C major seven chord four, D seven chord five, E minor seven chord six, and chord seven being F sharp minor seven flat five. Now those two keys obviously share the same chords, albeit in E minor, you're more likely to get B seven, but essentially what we're gonna do is analyze the song and we're gonna think about how different sections of the song relate to an E minor kind of feel and other sections relate to G major. Now I should explain about the colors I've used to label these Roman numerals. Here's the whole thing on the screen. Where it's red, it's an out of key chord. Where it's blue, it's the key of E minor. And where it's black, it's the key of G major. So we start out with a two, five, one in E minor with one slight difference. We've got F sharp minor 7 rather than F sharp minor 7 flat 5, which is normally your two chord in a minor key. And why? Well, because the melody note against this F sharp chord is a C sharp. Now that note is very much present as the fifth in an F sharp minor 7, but in F sharp minor 7 flat 5, we have a C as the flat 5. So we need this F sharp minor 7 to work with the melody. But it's still thinking of it as chord 2, but just not your typical chord 2. And we move to the five chord, B7, leading us to chord one, E minor, seven. And then this next chord is the start of the journey to G major. We're playing A7, and I've labeled it the five of five. Why is that? 
A7 is a dominant chord in the key of D. It will take you to D. This is a secondary dominant and it's leading us to the D9 in the next line. Um, we're getting there via turning this into A minor 7 first, which st starts a 2 5 1 in G major. So it's a 2 5 1 in the relative major of E minor. So A minor 7 is chord 2, D9 is a dominant essentially, that's chord 5 leading to G major, chord one, and then moving to chord four. You might recognize that whole progression from Autumn Leaves there. So you start out in E minor, resolve, then the A7 helps us get to D7, D9, sorry, which leads us to G. That four chord straight away sets up let's go back to E minor and we do that. So the next line is right back, flipping back to E minor. We've got a regular minor two, five, one. F sharp minor seven flat five this time to chord five, B seven. And then we get a bit of rest here. Pretty much two whole bars on this chord. And we're just putting this E minor chord one in an inversion at the end to get a chromatic bass line going D down to C sharp in the next line. Red here for these next two chords because they're out of key. You know, when we get minor seven flat five going to dominant, moving like this, it's, it's a minor two five. Now, C sharp, F sharp would be uh, a two five in the key of B minor. And we do lead to a B chord, but we go to B seven. F sharp, F sharp will take you to B take you to B major, B minor, or B7. Um, it's called the five, I've called it the five of five because it's, it's the five chord leading to. Now we start, now you'll see here these next two chords are labeled in red because they're from another key. C sharp minor seven flat five to F sharp seven. That is a minor two five and F sharp will lead you to, you know, either B minor, B major or B dominant like it does here. Typically B minor, but in this instance we're doing a 2-5 from the key of B, leading us to the dominant of the key of E minor, our kind of overarching key if you like. I'm gonna move that up a semitone, chord six, but as a dominant in the key of E minor, back to chord five in E minor. So recap of the A section, we start in E minor in the first line, A7 sets up the movement towards the towards that D9 chord, which leads us to the relative major, G major. Then we're flip-flopping back to E minor in the third line. Then we get a bit of out of key feel here, which I think helps create a bit of tension and interest, leading to that B7, which will help us start again in the B section. B section starts in exactly the same way as the A section. So we're going two, albeit with minor seven rather than minus seven flat five to five chord one and then we've got the A7 leading towards the D9 turning that A7 into two which we're now setting up a two five from the key of G major but we don't get a resolution here that's gonna come a bit later we get a nice surprise here by going tense moment in the chord progression I like this bit B minor seven flat five to E seven flat nine. Could play an E seven there if you want instead. That would work too. Now, much like F sharp minor seven flat five, B seven, and C sharp minor seven flat five, F sharp seven, this is a minor two five. And it is a minor two five in the key of A minor. So it leads us to this chord in the next line, A minor seven. That's chord two in the key of G. And then we're gonna go up a minor third do a quick 2-5, C minor 7 to F9, that's a 2-5 from the key of B flat, it would also in the key of G be what's known as the backdoor dominant, if I played C minor 7, F9 to G, that's a, a backdoor dominant. Now, it's a bit com complicated here perhaps, but the next chord is B minor seven. And one big thing that's very common in jazz is to substitute chord one for chord three and vice versa because they share a lot of notes. And normally this C minor seven to F nine, it could be a way to get to G major. As I said, the backdoor dominant. B 
because there's so many similarities in notes between G major 7 and B minor 7, uh, it can lead there too. So we've landed on chord 3 in the key of G, and we get an E7, it's the 5 of the 2 chord, so it will lead to A7, but A7 is a dominant, and then we get this chromatic chord above the D9, chord 5, where we eventually resolve to G6, chord 1, G major. Now don't forget you can get the PDFs of both the chord shapes and the chart, link in the description where there's also a link to my Patreon page. This is the standard of the month over there and if you choose to join it over there, you could also learn the chord melody arrangement that I've done for this, the comping study, and the two solos, beginner solo and intermediate solo. Finally, just to say, this song has a Latin feel. As I said earlier, if you've not really yet got together your basic bossa rhythm, that's something you need to look at, then I'll put a video up on the screen for you to take a look at a way you can get started with that and apply it to the chords in this song. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment. Please hit that like button if you've enjoyed today's video and you found it useful. Don't forget jazz guitar lessons every Wednesday with me, Andy. Until next time, you take care.